It's been a busy few weeks for the Philadelphia Eagles and since the end of the NFL Combine there have been plenty of rumours circulating. One of the more confusing, however, involved a future of 2019 first round draft pick Andre Dillard. The left tackle was suddenly being mentioned in trade rumours and speculation and reports citing that the Eagles weren't as high as many thought they were on their rookie tackle. Now a few days after these came to light, the Eagles doubled down on the Washington State product by saying that Jason Peters will indeed become a free agent, meaning that the man who will wear the crown at left tackle is now Andre Dillard, the natural heir to the throne. But I wanted to work out a a, where these rumours come from, B, do the Eagles have any reason to be anything less than 100% confident in Dillard, and C, just how high is that ceiling after we first watched his college tape almost a year ago now? My name is Liam Jenkins, and this is another episode of Eagles Film Room. Now before we get started, we've got a bit of business to take care of. We asked you on Monday if you could get our video to 250 likes, we would bring you this film room, so that's what we've done. Thank you to all of you, you're the real MVPs. Let's go for 300 on this video and keep that traction going. And secondly, in that video, we decided to do a giveaway for one of our new t-shirts. All you had to do to enter was give an appropriate band name for the Eagles' new offensive coordinator by committee. And the winner was Fisherman Fresco, who said Marty and the morning wigs and to me I was cackling that won it by a mile so Fisherman Fresco you've won yourself a PSN t-shirt get in contact we'll send one your way and do not think for a second you're getting away without being drafted with the 21st overall pick. You are our shiny new wide receiver and all we need you to do if you're new around here is catch that subscribe touchdown, okay? Don't do an Elson Aguilar, don't drop the pass, hit that big red button, let's have some fun this offseason. Now before we dive into the 2019 tape, it's important to get a rough idea of what we're looking at with Andre Dillard, who didn't really get his first real substantial action until week 6 when Jason Peters left the Vikings game a little early. Early. Now, prior to being drafted by the Eagles, he had a very raw skill set, but the athletic upside was beyond salivating. Dillard's a very agile tackle. He doesn't have the ideal arm length for the position, and that can come back to haunt him. And there were some concerns over his run blocking, but Jeff Stoutland fell in love with the happy feet, as he mentioned. The footwork of Andre Dillard constantly being able to reset and outmaneuver the pass rushes coming his way. In the film room, we did breaking down his tape from Washington State. It was clear that his hand placement wasn't quite there just yet. He had a strong football IQ to diagnose stunts and twists and that sort of thing, but the hand placement, the hand positioning was definitely an area that needed work. So all in all, you've got a brilliantly sized, a brilliantly shaped, athletic, prototypical left tackle of the future that just needed some tweaking, some refinement. So it made sense that he sits in behind Jason Peters. And while he filtered in the occasional snap through the opening few weeks of the season, he played 71% of snaps in week six and then got his first start in week seven. So this video is going to count for weeks six, seven, eight, and nine. His four most played games of the season because his development through these games is something I really wanted to draw attention to. So let's start with week six against the Vikings. He gets dropped into the game with about nine minutes left in the first quarter and already the Vikings pass rush can smell blood in the water. Danielle Hunter, a veteran of the game, just slams into Dillard's chest here and look at the hand placement. They're by his side. There's too delayed. There's no instinct to come up and wrap around the pass rusher and that just invites a speed rush. Now the thing you'll note here is that the puppy paws are gone. There's no more slapping and trying to get those hands on. When they're engaged, they're engaged and that is a credit to Jeff Stoutland because that isn't easy to do. Look at this play slow down here. His hands are by his side a little bit late but as soon as they come up, they're into the chest of Anthony Barr and he's holding his ground. That's a strong rep considering it's his first game. Here's another example of that. The hand placement itself is getting better but when when they actually get onto the player, there's still this almost delay, that hesitation of getting them on in the first place. As the game progressed, it's safe to say that Ederson Griffin wanted to throw the kitchen sink at Andre Dillard, but he held his own. Again, when he's met with a speed rush, I think there's still problems at this stage in the season, but handling spin moves and rips and clubs, he's really technically sound because he plays on that athleticism and he can just let it roll across his body. It's really impressive. Like, look at this, just moves very well laterally, it positions himself well, that even though he may not have that desired length or the right hand placement. He's such a big body that can move so quick, it's a pain to get around without diving into. 
Now again, if we directly contrast this to handling a ball rush, the difference is astounding. If you compare it to Lane Johnson as well, he's almost absorbing it in the chest and his shoulders go above his knees. He's unable to drive forward and that creates problems. Wentz doing some unbelievable wizardry there to get that ball off. But that's the main takeaway, I think, in terms of pass protection. And a thing outside of a ball rush, he seems to handle pretty well, but you get someone just driving into his chest and he's unable to get his hands up and under and that is a problem. And if you contrast this to Lane Johnson, Right tackles back for act as that driving force, whereas Dillard's are too close together, side by side. Anything in his chest, he's going to get thrown back, and that's exactly what happened. So it's all very much a snowballing reaction. It's correctable, and there's some great flashes, but what about in run blocking and screens? And this is my first real problem with Dillard, because... At the second level, I just don't know what's going on. This happened way too many times, and in this game specifically, there was loads of it. He gets absolutely floored and put on his backside here by Anthony Barr, but then you put him back in pass protection against a very different type of pass rusher who isn't trying to ball rush into his chest, and you see that proficiency and that almost veteran instinct where he's playing really, really well. So it's not his cleanest game, but there is definitely room for improvement, and I wanted to add this play in as well. It's not his finest rep, but it just shows you how good Carson Wentz is. Dillard gets walked all the way back to the QB. Wentz, while being flawed, makes a stunning throw. So for anyone that's doubting Carson Wentz being a franchise QB, just sip on that throw because it's quite nice, really. But after game one, I think it's safe to say that there is a problem handling speed rushes, but everything else in pass protection is looking much better than it did coming out of college. In run blocking and screens, there's definitely some work to be done. But most importantly, it all comes down to hand placement and how long you can sustain blocks. Whether it's run blocking or pass protection, it all comes down to where those hands are going and it's something, as I said before, that admired his game since back in his college days. But now we're looking at his first proper start. This is week seven against the Dallas Cowboys. He's playing 100% of offensive snaps and against a very good pass rush as well. So let's see how he moves on from week six to week seven. First thing you notice is an increase in confidence. Like on one of the very early plays here, he slams the pass rusher into the ground. And from there, you really begin to see the pieces of the puzzle forming together for Andre Dillon. Now watch this rep here against defensive tackle Malik Collins. Someone sized very similar to him but the sustaining of the block, he's not letting him go. He's still holding on. That's what you want to see. That's the type of hustle that we needed to see from Andre Dillon. Now against Demarcus Lawrence, one of the more nasty pass rushes in this league, he's going to try hitting with a spin move. We already know that's road closed. There is no way he's getting through there. This is much better from Dillon. Look at those hands. He's right into the chest. He's driving with that back foot. This is a better game already. It's night and day from week six to week seven. Here's a great example of just everything coming together for Dillard. I absolutely love this rep. I've watched it so many times. The hands straight into the chest of the pass rusher, but watch the next move. That back foot back back. He's trying to stop momentum. He's driving forward. And even there, it's an extended play. It's all crashed around him. Dillard refusing to let go. Wentz still gets the ball off. It's a pretty bad throw, all things considered, but that's not what we're looking at here. Another rep against 56. This is Joe Jackson defensive end. It's the agility and the footwork I want to watch here because he just drives him laterally outside of the path of Carson Wentz who gets the ball off. Now again, he wasn't perfect. There were still some flaws. It wasn't consistent. Same thing again as week one. Hands by the side. Pass right it into the chest, drives him back into the path of the quarterback. It's an easy sack for an experienced Robert Quinn who has clearly watched some tape on Dillard and knew you could just drive him all the way through and the difference again between him and Lane Johnson in that situation is night and day. It's definitely an area for development. The other area, of course, where he needed to push on was the second level. Now, right here, he has to get up and block Leighton van der Esch. He oversets it a bit, one touch, and it's not enough, and Jordan Howard ends up being brought down. That really isn't acceptable. And then in the run game, there's still a bit of lack of oomph here. Like, he can't open that hole as much as he'd like, and it ends up biting him. Howard's got nowhere to go. And the last play I wanted to show was this one, where I know I've mentioned it in a former video, but it's actually a really good rep. Look at the angle. Dillard's got to defend, then recognises the stun, and unfortunately, he gets driven into Carson Wentz, but Carson Wentz moved off of his spot and into the path of the pass rusher. Had he just stayed in that initial spot to throw the ball, then it would have been a great block by Dillard, who'd picked up that stunt very acutely. But instead, this is probably going to go down as a sack allowed on his part, which is a real shame. So after game two, we can see that he's improved with his hand placement. There are far less errors with him being by his side. 
He's still struggling at the second level, but everything else is starting to come together now. The confidence is flowing. He's looking far more agile. And you can see that footwork that Jeff Stoutland raved about after the NFL draft coming into its own. Start to week number eight against the Buffalo Bills. It's another tenacious pass rush, but this for me was the game where Andre Dillard came into his own. There's one thing I want you to watch on this play, and it's his hand placement. Look at him get up and under into the chest of the pass rusher there on a huge pass from Carson Wentz. But it's that resetting of the hands. He's constantly adjusting now. He's getting them on much earlier and then adjusting later. As opposed to waiting for the perfect position, he's like, let me just get them on. I'll work with the rest afterwards. And you'll see it here as well. There's a conscious effort to get those hands on earlier, then reset and get underneath. And that is a developmental trait. You can see the work that Jeff Stout has done. Now look at this. It's not quite as clean as Lane Johnson on the other side of the field and he does get walked back to the quarterback. But hey, it's an improvement. It wasn't a bull rush where he got lifted off his feet. There was at least some resilience this time around. You see it here. That's a stop. That's a big time play. The sack came from the interior and that was against Shaq Lawson out of Clemson who's no slouch. Now he does still get walked inside a little bit. I think the fix for that for me is going to be functional strength. Getting in the gym, bulking up and working on that core. That's going to stop a lot of what we're seeing. And it's also going to improve his balance, which is something I also think hampered him, especially at the blocks at the second level. But on that note, this was the first game where Dillard was used on trap blocks. Now, right here, the idea is to pull the tackle, get him into that A gap and let him block the linebacker. Now, as we know, Dillard run blocking hasn't been strong, but look at him hustle and drive and get depth. Now, we haven't seen that before. We're used to seeing arm bars and poor efforts and ending up on the ground, but we're not seeing that now. This is big boy tackle play from Andre Dillard. He recognises there's a stunt coming, takes a huge leap back and just drives that linebacker into the ground. That's great hustle and again you see that confidence beginning to thrive. There's another example of diagnosing that stunt well. Because he moves so well laterally it makes plays like this just seem so easy. And I want to end with this because again we're talking getting to the second level and look at that. Not only has he sustained the block but he's put someone upfield. It's an amazing progression for Andre Dillard compared to what we saw at the second level in the first couple of games. So after game three, we're seeing more instinctive hand placement as opposed to reactive, and we're seeing the Eagles get confidence in him by using him on blocks that demand more responsibility, such as trap plays and things of that nature. Now his final start of the year will come in week nine against the Chicago Bears. It's like he's reached the final boss. He's got Khalil Mack and a ruthless, and I mean ruthless, Bears pass rush. So surely there'll be blood in the water. There's no way Andre Dillard could silence one of the elite pass rushes, right? Well, let's take a look. He's going to come up against Leonard Floyd here. The Bears are going to try and twist their way inside. And Dillard is going to, again, pass it off with ease. Keeps his head on a swivel. Comes back, gets his hand into the chest of the defensive tackle. Easy job. And Miles Sanders goes sprinting upfield. And just like building blocks, we get another element. Now he's using his hands to pull and push back. As opposed to just absorbing punches, he takes that energy, feeds it back to Urban. That is a rare thing for a tackle to do. And look at that. We spoke about puppy paws before. What if you apply that when the hands are already on? What you get is just violent hands from the tackle, constantly jabbing back inside and forcing Khalil Mack, one of the all-time greats, to go absolutely nowhere. That's what you want to see. Dillard now is not afraid to get his hands on first against Khalil Mack. Mack there positioned himself to get that inside arm on. Dillard having absolutely none of it. And here he's going to sustain a block as well against Khalil Mack. This is a really tough task for a rookie tackle, but the development from week one to what we see now is unbelievable. Like there he got walked back, but the hands were so much tighter to his chest. And you see another one here. Floyd's going to go all the way around the outside, driven to the ground by Dillard, who's able to run the arc well. If you think about the tackle that we saw in week six against the Vikings and the tackle we're seeing against the Chicago Bears, the contrast is night and day. And do you know what? It was inevitably going to give up a sack eventually because this is one of the toughest his defenses, if not the toughest in the NFL. And Leonard Floyd is one of those veteran names that you should fear. A little bit late with the hands there. Doesn't quite position himself well. Floyd works back inside and gets the sack. But the biggest bit of improvement, you guessed it, came in the run game. These are all coachable areas. Gets to the second level and drives upfield to create leverage. And what about as a run blocker? Again, sustaining against Khalil Mack. This was a really impressive game. The last two weeks, those last two starts, 
showed you everything you need to see from Dillard. Yes, it was a bit rocky against the Vikings, but it gradually improved and gradually improved. And I think now the Eagles are going into year two with a tackle they should absolutely feel confident with. And they're absolutely right to let Jason Peters walk in. Any trade rumor, frankly, is an absolute farce. And whoever's putting it out there should be damn right ashamed of themselves because there should be no validity to it. Dillard is going to be in year two of a five-year contract. That gives the Eagles four years to man that left-hand side. And if this is the development between the end of May and the end of his rookie year, imagine a full off-season under Jeff Stoutland. Imagine four full off-seasons under Jeff Stoutland. The ceiling is sky high for Andre Dillard, and hopefully this has eased some of those concerns. But let me know what you think, guys, down in the comments below. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy lives to watch this video. From myself, Liam Jenkins, you can follow me on Twitter, at Liam Jenkins PSN. I'll see you soon. Enjoy your day.